Hello, third grade artists. Today is our first virtual learning lesson. For our first lesson, we will be learning how to create this big apple. We will be learning about a new artist, Roy Lichtenstein, and pop art. What is pop art and who is Roy Lichtenstein? So, before we get there, we're gonna just review over the seven elements of art. First, we have line, we have shape, we have space, value, form, texture, and color. From those seven elements, we will be focusing on line, shape, and color. Now, the materials that you will need for this project are some glue or glue stick. You need a pencil, a pair of scissors. If you are painting, we are going to need one paintbrush, a tray or a plate to put your paint on, paint of course, a cup or a jar of water. You will need paper, eight and a half by 11, traditional copying paper, construction paper. You will need caps, like bottle caps of different sizes. So you can have large caps and smaller caps, maybe from like bottles of water. And if you have it, a wine bottle cork. You also, if you are not using paint, you will need markers and or crayons. You will also need magazines or newspapers. If you have both, that's great because I will be using both. Who is Roy Lichtenstein? Roy Lichtenstein is a pop artist. What is pop art? Pop art is an art movement that emerged in the 1950s through the 1960s. Roy Lichtenstein was known for his use of primary colors, which are blue, yellow, and red, and his use of bold outlines, and his use of the Ben Day dots, which is just a fancy term for the dotted pattern, which is commonly used in comic books. What characteristics make pop art pop art? So you'll see recognizable imagery, bright colors, innovative techniques, and mixed media. That is what we are going to do for this project. We are going to first draw our apple. We're gonna start off with a hump, a curve, and another hump. Try to get your apple to fill the paper completely. And it's okay if it doesn't, you can try again. So, after you've created your two humps at the top, we're gonna make a curved line that goes to the bottom. And we're gonna make an upside down U shape. And another curved line that connects the bottom of the apple to the top of the apple. Now, we have an eraser on our pencil so you can adjust as needed. Now, we are going to add the stem of the apple, which is just a curved rectangle. and we are going to add the leaf. Like so. This is what your apple should look like now. Once you finish your apple, you can set that aside. Now we're going to move on to making our prints. If you're using paint, they should look like this. I've created some already for you. So how did I create these prints? I'm gonna show you how. I used the tops of bottles and a bottle wine cork. We are going to treat these bottles as stamps. As mentioned before, something that makes pop art pop art is innovative techniques. This will count as an innovative technique. So you can stamp it in the paint, you stamp it in the paint, and then you stamp it on your paper. That's how all of these were created. The smaller dots were created using just the top of eraser of a pencil. So you stamp it in the paint and you stamp it on your paper. The others were used with varying sizes of bottle caps. And the final one was used with the paintbrush. And that's only if you're painting. If you don't have a paintbrush, you can also use your finger. You can dip it in the paint and you can swipe it to create these curved lines. If you do not have paint, no worries, we're gonna use marker. And I'm gonna show you how. 
You can pick a color, set that aside, and we are going to pick up a bottle cap. We're going to lay it flat and we are going to trace it. Trace around it. So you're going to hold down your bottle cap as best as you can and you're going to trace around it like that until you have a round circle. You're going to use your marker and you're going to fill that in like that. I would suggest using the wide side of your marker rather than the tip. If you use the wide side of your marker, you can fill up most of the space. If you use the tip, it's a little bit harder to fill in a space. To create smaller dots, pick a color. You do not have to use something to trace and then fill in. You can just go right in and create a dotted pattern. As we mentioned before, this dotted pattern is called the Bende pattern. You can do the same effect that we have here. The same effect can be also done in marker. So we're going to pick up that paper and using the wide side of our marker, create this swooping motion. Same technique, different medium used, paint, marker. Now, what you want to be mindful of is that with using lighter markers. Although this is a yellow paint on blue paper, we can't use a yellow marker on blue paper because it won't be very visible. We're going to have to use a darker color marker. I'm going to use purple. After you've completed your prints, whether you do paint, marker, or crayon, be sure that the paper is completely filled with that pattern. After you've completed your samples, if they are in paint, be sure to maybe wait a few hours because the paint needs to be dry before you start cutting them. So because my samples are already dry, I'm going to start cutting them. We're going to grab our apple that we traced earlier and we are going to take one marker. It could be any color. I prefer to use a black marker. Using the wide end of my marker, I'm tracing my apple. So be sure that your apple does fill the page. It fills the page completely. So you can start with any one of these prints to start with, and it's like a puzzle piece, okay? So we're laying our pieces in here and we're trying to figure out where each piece will fit. Now you can start cutting and start with anywhere you like. So I'm gonna start with the edge. I know that the side of my apple is curved. So I can create a curved line. Like that. And we see how that curved line fits on the side of this apple. Now, because this is a puzzle, we are going to cut this Keeping the curved edge, we're going to cut inside of that shape to make it into another type of a shape. So now we have this trapezoid distorted shape and we are going to place it here. I'm going to flip it on the back and I'm going to grab my glue stick and I'm going to apply glue on the back. 
of my paper. So, first piece done. Now we can either move on to cutting more from the prints or remember, we're using mixed media as well because mixed media is what makes this pop art. So, I'm gonna grab some of my newspaper and my magazine and I'm gonna cut some shapes out of this as well. So I'm just gonna just randomly cut from the magazine I just grabbed some words, no images, no color, mainly black and white. So here's a random shape and I'm going to find a place to put it. And I'm going to put it right there because it fits alongside this line. If it doesn't fit exactly how you want it, you can easily overlap shapes. Set the sheet aside and we're going to put some glue on the back of this. Now, we're going to jump forward and we're going to move on into putting all our shapes in. After that, we'll move on to the next step. Once you've finished placing all of your pieces inside the apple, be sure to place all your scraps into a little pile, okay? We don't want to throw them away, maybe put them in a baggie, because you never know down the road, whenever we do another project, you may actually come back to some of those scraps, okay? And any prints that you didn't use, you can set them aside in that baggie as well. So make sure you put your top on your glue, set that aside. Now we are going to grab our black marker. If you don't have a black marker, you can use a black crayon or even if you have a sharpie. That'll work too, as long as it's black. We are going to outline our shapes like so. We're going to come in and we are going to outline our shapes like this. You can go a little bit over top of them because if you use magazine, magazines will take a while for the marker to dry. And if the pieces overlapped, sometimes you have to go over them a few times. And when you're finished doing that, it will look like this. You see that every single shape is outlined, okay? Now, after you finish outlining all of your shapes, you are going to outline your apple. After you are done outlining your apple, it should look like this. We outline the shapes and the apple so that it resembles this. To get this final product, we can cut the apple out. Now I'm going to cut around this apple edge using my scissors. Okay, here is our final product. Now we have created our Big Apple Pop Art. It has all the characteristics that Pop Art has. It has our recognizable imagery, which is our apple. It has the bright colors. It has the innovative techniques and it has mixed media. And we've incorporated all of that inside of this whole apple. We learned about Roy Lichtenstein, who was a pop artist. We learned about pop art, which emerged in the 1950s through 1960s. We learned that Roy Lichtenstein was best known for his bright colors using primary colors, bold lines, and the Ben Day dot pattern. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this art project. More art videos will be posted very soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the KO Production channel. Goodbye. See you soon.